Okay, uh, hi everyone, my name is Connor Strange. I'm a freelance data technician and live events assistant. I've been very fortunate to, well, been a part of a pantomime last year and, well, a little thing called coronavirus decided to pop its head around the corner and unfortunately uh, millions of industry professionals around the UK are currently at work. And today the purpose of this video is to really get the message out there that we need to be heard yesterday the Red Alert campaign, well, was at full swing across the UK with a national event happening in London and regional events happening across the UK in three, six, nine, ten, eleven major cities. So you can you can see there's a, there's a lot of traction for this campaign. So uh, before I speak to our guest today, what is the Red Alert campaign? Well, this campaign is raising public and media awareness in support of the live events sector, which employs circa a million highly skilled people in the UK, all of whom have had no work for the past five months, with little likelihood of restarting until spring of next year. This sector includes a huge uh, array and chain of people in event production, audio, lighting, uh, logistics, planning, video, transportation, and even some of the world's leading technology manufacturers. And this campaign is being run by a large and growing industry collective of trade bodies, businesses and freelancers affected by the shutdown all working together. This is spanning across online social messaging. It's even been on the news. Uh, the BBC have been reporting on this as well as other major news outlets. V uh, video case studies and outdoor events like the ones you've been seeing across the news, uh, especially the ones happening in London, but also it happening in Cardiff, Edinburgh, in the northeast even. So you can find out more information about the Red Alert and the hashtag we make events campaign at placer.org and you can find a link for it there. But now that I've talked about the Red Alert campaign, we should go and talk to our guest. So uh, good morning, Bob. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself and basically tell everyone about what you do? Yeah, sure. So I'm a full time drummer. I've been playing since I was seven and I, I left school at 16 and started working with my parents. And basically, alongside that, I just started trying to carve my way into the music industry. Uh, I'm 22 now, and for the last four years, I've been working full-time self-employed, teaching drums, playing for theatre productions, playing with bands, weddings, functions, all of the above, really. And uh, pretty much until March this year, where it all came to a standstill. And yeah, I, I taught 17 students a week. Uh, back in February, I'm um, down to five and it's all over Skype and I was, I had three gigs a week, pretty much every week and down to nothing. My next gig at the moment is July 27th, I believe, next year uh, and I can't really see anything coming back soon or any, any hope of it really because even even if they do open the venues and they say 50% capacity, there's, there's not really much margin to make any profit there. And it doesn't work. Businesses only run on profit. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very odd situation, isn't it? Yeah, I think very much so. And especially you've just raised that point about it being financially viable. You know, mm -hmm. looking at big, big arenas like the NEC even, um, you know, where they fit 15,000 people and they'd be, you know, yeah. if, if, the, if they have to open, they're only being able to seat 4,000. And you've got you to take into account, uh, you've got to pay for the artist and then obviously all the companies are involved in the production of that uh, performance. It's not financially exactly. viable. And I think the no. worst thing about it is that uh, back when the government was saying, um, you know, we're going to open uh, indoor and outdoor events, but give you very little notice. There's no point. Um, I see no, no reason for anyone to open because it's not going to be financially viable for them. They've already, we've already lost so much money. Uh, yeah. The creative industries are, are worth billions of pounds in revenue to the UK economy, and yet we've been let down. We've, we were the we were the first industry to go and we're the last to return, I think. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking, I, I, when it happened, I just remember messaging my band and I was like, to be honest, I was like, it's probably time to think of plan B. Mm. <laughs> I was like, because I can't, we're going to be the first to go. And even when things come back, 
and as as we can see things are starting to reopen but people aren't going to go to to live events because there's going to be the there's going to be the restrictions for one and there's also going to be people who are still worried about getting coronavirus yeah. and things like this which are legitimate concerns and i can see why people wouldn't want to go to events and and it makes sense so one of one of the biggest things that i relied on was i played for a, a restaurant um well, it's like a cocktail chain revolution de cuba hmm. they got a few of them sort of dotted around and we played in a few of them and we'd play lots of background music and things like that and because my band we, we play a real mix of jazz latin rock pop everything so we'd we play some latin sets in the day while everyone's sitting down having food and then afterwards we'd play our pop party set and everyone would get up and dance but they're not looking to fill dance floors anymore mm. that's not what they want because then the, you you can't get you can't get people dancing and keep the two meter restrictions yeah and it, it it just doesn't work so it's it's so odd i think it's extremely hard because a lot of us uh, a lot of us are thinking about maybe not returning to the industry because mm -hmm. uh, as well there, there are a lot of industry professionals that i've spoken to that maybe don't want to return to the industry anymore because well do we see a light at the end of the tunnel i i personally don't feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel right now maybe in the future but it's not around the corner I'll grant people that yeah i think i think i always play the optimist that's, mm. that's all, always how i've been so for me i uh, i just have a relentlessness to not give up um mm. i'm just gonna go for it and i'm finding ways to help like the skype lessons and things like that i've been able to do that to keep uh, myself ticking over things like that I mean fortunately for me one of the big things is that before coronavirus a lot of my outgoings went straight back into music I was so obsessed I mean like I, I don't know if you're filming the video or not but you can see behind me there's two drum kits there's amps there's guitars I'm sat in front of a desk that's got like uh, Alan and Heath and loads of stuff so all of my money has gone back into music so I'm quite fortunate that because everything's stopped I'm not spending my money on music so my outgoings have come down as well mm. so personally I am in a quite a privileged position and have probably been I haven't massively been affected by coronavirus it's not been the biggest effect because the majority of my work and days beforehand were working in here calling setting up gigs and things like that and then the majority of my outgoings were my car, the travel expenses, things like that. And just all of this, but because all of it's gone, I'm kind of ended up in a place where I can just tick over, all right. But I know lots of people aren't. Lots mm. of people have moved to London to try and make a career and they're pay, trying to pay their way in a, in a job to, to do music and they rely on the extra money from the weekly gigs to pay their rent. And suddenly they're all gone. And if they, and, and I know loads of people who've moved to, moved to places like London and got a job in a cafe and then got, and then get the rest of their income from gigs. Um, at the start of lockdown, both of them were just gone instantly. Just bam, everything. That's mm -hmm. it. Two, two forms of income just instantly vanished, which is mad. And I think, I think it, it is always going to come back. And, and I think relying on the fact that so many people have used the arts to get through lockdown think of all the people that are reading books all the people that are listening to music watching tv all the time and i think what might happen is that we'll realize that over the next few years a lot less starts coming out there'll be less new music there'll be less new films there'll be less tv netflix will be producing less shows and people there'll be demand for it and i think it's it's got to come back because it's one of those things isn't it is that there's always room to tell someone a story or write someone a song yeah. and people are always interested in it because there's the human element so i don't think it's ever going to go away no i just think it's it's just it's just going to hit that lull isn't it and we're just going to have to suffer and, and put up with it and it's it's just kind of that stoic mentality of right it's it's going to be shit we've got to knuckle through this which which really sucks and that's that's the thing though is that if we can get help we need it 
because we're so important because we we uplift spirits of people mm. like think of like i i can name like like there's hundreds of people who who are sort of depressed and have anxiety and things like that and they relate to bands they relate to artists and absolutely love them and they they say you always hear artists saying oh i got fans messaging me saying no i really helped them in in their time of depression and that's so important because now it's a massive time of depression <laughs> and it, it just it just swings around like it's just it's such a vital part of our culture i i don't think it can go away i i, I don't think even without support I think it will still be there, but that doesn't say that we shouldn't have the support. We should definitely have the support. Yeah. So coming on to support, what what support would you like to see the government put in place? Because you know, personally, at the minute, I think the support they have put in place is not tailored towards the event production industry. No, I mean, it's, millions it's of us are, are freelancers, so we, we don't fall under the. Um, uh you, you know the the many different schemes that the government already has no yeah so like myself i haven't fallen fallen into any of the boxes uh i can i sort of missed them all by one point or whatever mm -hmm. um ag again i'm fortunate enough that I, I haven't needed it but i know there's lots of people that, that do need it i think things like the, fur the furlough scheme have have to continue yeah, because it's it's just got to hasn't it this is again it's it's this whole thing if like they say right you can reopen but only at 50 percent capacity mm. it's like right okay well if we're at 50 percent capacity how do we play how do we pay 100 percent of staff no that doesn't work it's it's a, a theater that's on 50 percent of their profit cannot operate at 100 percent effectiveness mm. so we have to have things like furlough continue until we can be back to 100% strength. We need, and things like grassroots venues. I think lots of people look at the big venues and things like this, and, and they look at things like the O2 Arena and stuff like that, and they're like, oh yeah, no, that really needs, needs support, and then we can have big artists come over and things like this, but the big artists don't make it if there's no grassroots venues. They don't have anywhere to practice their craft. They don't play the small rubbish gigs that get them to where they are. Um, and we need that. And the, these venues fight hard enough as it is. I, like Cardiff for me is where I mainly play my gigs. And I know that places like Fuel in Cardiff, they're constantly fighting battles to try and remain open without this. And it, it needs, we need grants loans loans just don't work then they're, they're, they're not going to work where you're not going to place a company like that in a place to pay back a massive loan yeah. especially in times like these because we just don't we, do, we don't know what's going to happen we don't even know even if they said right we're going back to 100 capacity you're allowed to have everyone in you still can't guarantee that people are going to come because there's the worry of coronavirus mm. And it's it, we, we just it needs it needs money pumped into it to stay afloat. And it's it's that age of thing of like you got to spend money to make money, haven't you? And it's if if it's something that our culture values, then we need it. Yeah, the creative industries are such a major part of British culture. We lose we lose our heritage. You know, we lose hundreds of years uh, of of history that that's been behind us. You know, we've look how many bands have come from the uk that you know have made it so successfully and are a part of our british culture the beatles yeah i could i could go on but we'd be here all year yeah um, i know yeah well yeah how many do you want to name you got the stones you got coldplay you got yeah. mute you got oasis like <laughs> how far do you want to go with this yeah exactly I'm happy to listen if you are. <laughs> it's crazy though it people rely on the on 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 uh music and and art and tv and but yet yeah, the government is powerless to do anything about it so i think yeah. doing stuff like this really does help to lobby the government to say we need action and we need it now yeah yeah i i, I think it does and, and and we we really do need it it's it is mad right I, yeah, it's it's just it's it, it's odd to see to see gigs go through, and, and we're, we're like we're only talking about like the money side. Like, mm. I've worked st since I was seven. I've practiced, 
to be able to do this job and I get to a point where I'm finally making a living from it and it's gone. Yeah. I <laughs> was in the like... same boat. I'm in the same boat as well. So uh, at the end of last year, after well, we fin we'd finished uh, the, the production we were on, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll try and see if I can go freelance. So in the January, I decided to make plans to, to go freelance. Yeah. And then I thought, well, I could make something of this. You know, let's see if I can get some work in. Uh, I, w I was going to help support a friend's event, a uh, couple of projects, you know, I had a little bit of work going on. Wasn't anything yeah. major, but at least it was the experience. And then in March, sort of middle, you know, sort of towards the end of March, everything just went out the window. Yeah, I know. I message after message saying, oh, well, it's been cancelled uh, until <laughs> lockdown restrictions are lifted and we can actually hold these events. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I was I, in February. I uh, I got a book in, and I celebrated when I got that book in because that meant that it was going to be my most the most gigs I've ever had in a year. Hmm. And I remember celebrating. I was like, brilliant! Like this is great. The gigs are going up, and just adding them all the time. And it, we were only in February, and I was, I was booking all these gigs. And uh, just looked the other day. I did when I was fourteen. I did more gigs that year than I've done this year. Well, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> it's mad isn't it i think i think the sort of the message that we want to bring out there i mean for any industry professional thing is to you know stick with it and well i mean if anyone is going to watch this um you know i'm just a message away if any industry professional wants to wants to send me a message um yeah same i'm always up for a chat I think I think the fortunate thing with our industry is that we attract passionate people, don't we? Like the people who, who write these songs, write books, write TV shows and things like that, actors and things, they are passionate people. They really care about what they do. And I think that just shows that they, they're, they're just not going to give up. And that's, that's a good thing yeah. that we, we are just not going to give up. We're not going away. We're just asking for some help. Well, as this uh, as this notebook says, the, the show must go on. It certainly must. Bob Thomas, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate the time that you've taken. I'm going to Not leave um, somewhere up for here. Well, somewhere on screen. I'm going to leave his uh, Instagram. So go and check him out. Bob, it's Cheers. been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Yeah.